So science, most of you know, um, and are probably interested in science and we're, science isn't static, it's always changing. And we like to think that our faculty is the same way. So how, do, how does the faculty of science stack up? What can we offer you when it comes to your undergraduate degree? So really at the University of Alberta, we, have, um, we provide the next generation of scientists with the tools, the teaching, the research, and the experience that they'll need to be successful in the science community. And you might not be aware, but we have a handful of programs that rank in the top five and top 10 in the world. So our paleontology and geology programs are ranked third and fifth in the world. Our biology, math, and computing science programs are ranked fourth, fifth, and sixth in Canada. In the Faculty of Science, we, are a large, um, we, are, we have a large undergraduate student body. So about 7,000 students are in our faculty and we offer over 61 areas of study. So really there's truly something for everyone. In regards to the Faculty of Agricultural Life and Environmental Sciences, which I will refer to as AILS for short, they also have some really unique um, subjects that you can study. Um, they are a smaller faculty, but they have some programs that are ranked in the top 100 in the world. So they're mainly known for agriculture, forestry, and their environmental science program. But they also offer one of the only accredited dietetics program in Alberta. And they also offer a fashion business management program, which is really unique to Western Canada. They also have strong ties to professional associations, so becoming an agrologist, a food technologist, a forester, or even a dietitian. Their faculty is considerably smaller than science, about a thousand students, um, so much smaller faculty, and then they offer some of the largest awards programs on campus. So before we continue in the presentation, I do want to be able to chat with all of you. So of course, teachers, you can submit questions in the Google chat and we'll, we'll address those at the end or at some point in the presentation. But students, if you want to pull out your phones, if you're allowed, <laughs> not sure if you are, um, and go to Slido, sli.do and enter event code 8872, you have the opportunity to input questions in real time that I'll be looking at at the end of the presentation. So I'll just leave that on for a moment. So sli.do event code 8872, and then you can type in your questions and we can see them all populate on there. So what are we known for and what can we offer you if you studied in the Faculty of Science or in the Faculty of Ales? Lots of things, um, it's hard to kind of narrow it down, but we have to a few categories. So obviously we are a large university and we promise that your undergraduate degree is going to be a really fulfilling degree. You're going to be challenged, you're going to be innovative, and you're going to become part of a small science community within a large university. So how do we train you to be a scientist? Well, labs are a really big portion of that. You're going to have some extensive lab training to be able to, you know, do effective experimentation, uh, be comfortable with specialized lab techniques, and also to operate and understand complex apparatus. You'll also experience the highest number of contact hours and lowest fees in our first year science labs compared to any other university in Canada. And although your lectures might be large, the lab sections remain small, so 20 to 25 students. So they are a pretty intimate setting um, where you have that really good hands-on experience. Obviously with the pandemic, we've shifted. And so lab, some labs have gone online, but students will be in, um, are in some labs still on campus. So we are still operating, it's just at a limited capacity. There's also some really unique learning sites on campus. So things that you might not know about, but for example, in the Faculty of Science, we've got various facilities that you can access as a student. So we have our paleontology and mineralogy museums. We have the biological sciences greenhouse. So if you didn't know, this is actually a greenhouse on the top floor of the biological science building with different temperature controlled rooms where they're growing different types of plants to mimic different climates. We have a dino lab with all the different fossils that you know, our students and researchers are finding out in the field and bringing back to campus to scrape away at. We have an astronomical observatory on the top floor of our building, which is the Centennial Center for Interdisciplinary Science. Here we've got three high-powered telescopes to view the solar system, stars, sun, moon, it's pretty neat, and you have access to that. And just even on our main floor, we have something called the Geoscience Rock Garden. So they look like a bunch of rocks sitting around our campus building, but they actually serve a purpose and so students in our earth and atmospheric science programs go um, and do their labs outside and study these rocks. We also have something called a hardware hacker space where you can do different projects in like millwork or 3D printing, etc. 
In terms of ales, uh, they have a fully functioning dairy barn where they're producing milk. So you could be drinking U of A milk. They also have a South Campus farm with livestock. So specifically for um, students studying agriculture, this gives them that really good hands-on um, ability to you know, work directly with the animals and, and what it would be like on a farm. They have a textile museum because they have a program in human ecology and textiles. And then they also have something like the Human Nutrition Research Unit where they're studying diabetes, et cetera, things related to health that students can get involved in. So lots of really cool sites. And aside from the unique learning sites, you can also participate in field schools as well during your degree. Because we're a large university, we also offer hundreds of courses, which is overwhelming, yes, but very exciting because you'll appreciate this as you move further in your degree, just to have the choice to take other courses. And we also offer interdisciplinary and online courses. Our professors are also some of the best in the world. They're recognized internationally for doing the research that they are doing. And it's really neat that these researchers who are so passionate about, you know, what they're studying, they are the ones teaching you your first, second, third, and fourth year courses. So that really translates through. You get to learn from these amazing uh, individuals um, who are the top in their field. And of course, we are a research intensive university. So we offer training and support that teaches you how to engage in research right at the undergrad undergraduate level. So you don't need to wait until you're done your undergraduate degree to get involved in research. And I'll touch on that in a few slides. And of course, we do offer you resources. So no matter which faculty you're in, there is a dedicated team of advisors that can help you through the progression of your degree. There's also a variety of academic support services for students to assist you with courses, maybe your English courses, your math and statistics courses, or even your physics courses. And of course, even though class sizes can be large, the professors are always willing to help and have set aside um, office hours to assist students with the course material. So you'll have support along the way. Something new that I wanted to share with you. This is this just launched around open house. So if you go to uab.ca slash side tours, you can actually have a sneak peek of some of these areas that I've mentioned. So I mentioned the Dynalab and the Shack. So you can take these virtual tours and read some tidbits of information there, which I think is really neat. All right, so on to degrees and programs. So what can you study? The answer is a lot. So in the Faculty of Science, there are about 61 areas of study. In the Faculty of Ales, there are about 25 areas of study, and we've lumped them into these categories of environment, core sciences, medical science, animal health, business and finance, life and social sciences, as well as computers and technology. You can use uab.ca slash high school to, or hs2sei, which is our high school to science webpage. It's a really good landing page that'll kind of take you to our different faculties, or you can use our program tool on the U of, U of A website to learn more about each program specifically and admission requirements. But just to highlight some, so what would be included in the environment? Well, we have programs in agriculture, agriculture and food business management, environmental and conservation sciences, forestry and forest business management, geology, planning, paleontology, geophysics, um, environmental earth science, so lots and lots in the area of environment. When we move into core sciences, we labeled it this way just so that you're more familiar because these are courses you're probably taking in high school. So areas of biology, chemistry, math, physics, or even physical sciences. The medical sciences includes biochemistry, cell biology, immunology and infection, neuroscience, pharmacology, and physiology. So these degree programs in our faculty are in partnership with the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry are, and are our specialization in honors programs. You can study animal health. So if you're interested in becoming a veterinarian, or maybe you're interested in like the life and social sciences. So this would include biological sciences, becoming a teacher and teaching science through our uh, science and education combined program, human ecology, um, nutrition and food science, or even psychology. And within the business and finance, you can study math and economics, math and finance, applied mathematics, statistics, and even have a business minor. And last, but certainly not least, computers and technology. So we have an amazing computing science program where you can study computing, add things in towards software practice, business, or even game development. So you have a lot of options, and I know that it can be very overwhelming when you're still in high school, but just always know that 
whatever you're kind of interested in, your interests may shift once you actually get to university and that's totally normal. So no matter where you start, it may not be where you end up, but as long as you start somewhere, right, you, you probably have an idea of what is interesting to you. So just talking more about the faculty of ALES. So they offer a lot of hands-on and applied science degrees and they're mostly related to animal health, nutrition and food, the environment, agriculture and family studies. And all of these programs do have lab components, they have work experience or internships and as well as research opportunities. So for example, all of the human ecology students complete a 200 hour practicum, which is a direct work experience that matches the students with a related employer. So they can really get out of the classroom and try out some skills and theories they have learned. So I won't go into all of the different programs, but just know that if you're interested in any of these programs, um, you can read all the different admission requirements and um, kind of intricacies of the programs online. So when we move into the Faculty of Science, I wanted to talk about our different degree types because this is something that we get asked about all the time. What is the difference between a general science degree versus a specialization versus the honors or even the combined? So I hope to explain that pretty quickly. Um, you can definitely learn more about it online, but I, just to give you an overall sense of what might be the better fit for you when you're thinking about applying. So if we look on the spectrum, the general science program is our most flexible, most popular program because this actually combines two areas of study. And as we move our way to the right, it becomes more structured and specialized as we move through the different degrees. So our general science program, this combines two areas of study. So you'll have to pick a major or a double major, and that major has to be a science area because obviously you're in the faculty of science, or you can have the option of doing a major and a minor. So the minor can be in science, arts, nutrition, human ecology, business, or agriculture. This degree is really appealing to a lot of students because think about all the different combinations. You can pick chemistry as your major and perhaps pick music as your minor. And students love the ability to kind of tailor their degree for the four years and take the courses in the order that they wish um, in the way that they wish. And so you have that flexibility in this program. It's also our least academic program. So um, it's not going to be as academic as our specialization honors and the combined program. This program is also the only one where you can study part-time. So part-time being um, taking one or two courses each term as opposed to three to five, which would be full-time. So if students have other commitments or are working, this is the program that would allow them to complete their studies um, at, at a part-time basis, if that's what appealed to you. As you move into our specialization degree, the main difference here from the general program is that it's more academic. So you're going to have to maintain slightly higher grades than you would if you're in general. And in a specialization degree, you no longer have a minor. So that's a big difference from a general program. So if you were to graduate from a general science program on your parchment or your degree, it would say, you know, Bachelor of Science, um, Bachelor of Science General, and then your major is in biological science. In a specialization program, you're actually picking a subtopic within a department to study. So for example, we have lots of different specialization programs uh, in like, if, so you can go into um, like molecular, cellular and developmental biology. You can go into like a computing science specialization software practice. You can study geology or paleontology. So you're not just studying like a broad topic of biology or the earth and atmospheric sciences, you're really honing in on a particular subject area. So this can be really good for students if you know that that's the area that you wanna study and you're passionate about it. And you, could, you don't really wanna have a minor. You don't really want that second area of study and that's all you wanna focus on. This might be a really good fit for you. And then lastly, um, we have the honors program, which is very similar to a specialization degree. It's just that this one is going to be even more academic than a specialization program. You still only have one area of study, so you don't have a minor. And it's going to be really structured. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. In a specialization and honors programs, it's structured. So you have your course curriculum from year one through year four, so you know exactly what you need to take. You have, a you have less flexibility and less room for those electives and options than you would in an honors program. So that might not appeal to some people, but that really might appeal to others. Um, it's really a personal preference and you might not even know until you actually take some courses and come to campus. 
But the honors program is certainly our most academic and really prepares you for careers in research or even um, graduate studies because in your fourth year, you're going to be doing a research capstone project and working really closely with a supervisor from the department. So that's a big difference from the specialization in general programs because the research is not part of your specialization or general streams, but it is in an honors. That's not to say you can't add research because you absolutely can. There are so many students who are in a general program or in specialization that add research to their degree because they would like to add that, um, but the honors builds it in. And then lastly, we have our Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education combined. So this is for the student that knows they wanna teach science at the secondary level and knows that that's all they wanna teach. So if you wanna teach social or a language or like a CTS course, then you wouldn't come to this program because you can't choose that as your minor. So in a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education combined, you'll get two degrees in five years and your major and minor will both be in a science area. So really good option to get two degrees um, in five years. It's pretty structured and a little bit more than our general program, but it's a really good choice to kind of shave off a year of study because another route to get two degrees would be to finish your science degree and then go into an after degree, which would actually take about six years or more. So this shaves off a year. So all of the programs I've mentioned thus far are um, available for you to enter into right from high school. Um, so we'll talk about that in a few slides. But I thought it'd be nice to actually have you meet one of our students. So this is Hannah. She's in her third year of the general science program and she's doing a double major. So I just wanted you to listen to her um, perspective of how things have gone um, during her journey in the faculty of science. Not working, sorry everyone. I'll see if I can get that going a little bit later, but we'll just move on uh, for the sake of time, sorry. All right, so let's talk about some amazing extras. So one big thing that we'd like to highlight is the opportunity to do some work integrated learning. So this is available to any student in either science or ALS and in any major or program, you can get relevant experience related to your degree and it's paid. So who wouldn't like that? Um, it's a really good way to make your degree memorable for the students that I meet. They absolutely love the opportunity to take the skills that they've learned in the classroom and actually apply it in the real world and work for a company and see what it would be like when they graduate. And in most cases, you're getting some really good experience and connections that you may even be hired by that company by the time that you graduate. So in the Faculty of Science, we call it the Science Internship Program. You can do placements from eight to 16 months. And most students are doing this in their third or fourth year. And we connect students with the companies, we help you write your resume and cover letter, and then you'll just interview for the positions and hopefully get them. We have placements not only in Edmonton and Alberta and, and in Canada, but you can also go internationally. So we've had students in Zurich, Switzerland over the summer working for Google, as well as students were in Budapest and Hungary and India. So really cool opportunities. In the Faculty of ALS, students are also eligible to participate in internship programs right after, second, after first year and it is available to all. They also have, um, they pair with uh, industry leaders and they have partnerships that are exclusive to the program and their internships are anywhere from four to 16 months in length. And I'll kind of talk about those opportunities a little bit later, but really great benefits to be paid. Um, and it really can help you figure out what you can do with your degree because that's also number one question we get. Like, what can I do with my degree? <laughs> um, it's not so clear cut when you come in to do a science degree I mean, when students go into nursing or engineering, kind of have a sense of, yes, this is what I can do. But with science, it can be pretty open-ended, which is really exciting and also a good thing because it kind of leaves you with endless opportunities. So research, I mentioned that research is a big part of the University of Alberta, and we really want you to get in it, involved in it because it's high impact, it's hands-on, and it really allows you to put your ideas and curiosity to work. And you can be part of scientific discovery and make an impact not only locally, but even globally. So adding research to your degree is pretty simple. You can do this by taking certain courses, adding a research certificate, maybe volunteering in a lab, um, or even combining your internship with research and completing your research abroad. We have a website, it's called the Undergraduate Research Initiative, which was started a few years ago. 
and it serves as a really good resource for students that assist you in finding research opportunities to add to your degree. So we'll just touch on a few of those just because they are specific to our faculties. So I mentioned that you can add a research certificate to your degree. So in the Faculty of Science, we have lots of certificates because um, we, we love research so much. So you can do a research certificate in biological sciences, psychology, or even biomedical research. And we also have joint certificates in game development, engaged leadership, and citizenship in arts and science. And the Faculty of Ailes has a certificate in sustainability. So what is a certificate? Essentially, a certificate will allow you for, uh, to further study in a special area of interest that is not easily identifiable on your transcript. So our certificates are embedded, meaning that they're taken alongside all of your regular classes and they're completed over the course of your degree. So by obtaining a certificate, you'll have this designation when you graduate and it will enhance your degree and you'll receive official recognition for the high level of skills that you have achieved. You also can add lots of other certificates that are not necessarily research-based. So if you're interested in adding a certificate outside of science, some examples of what you can do are peace and post-conflict studies, translation studies, international learning, et cetera. There are lots to choose from. Um, in the Faculty of Science, we, we are a leader of online learning. So obviously with the pandemic, we have shifted all of our classes online, but prior to that, we were actually innovators in the online learning department. So lots of cool courses that students were able to take um, as part of their degree program. So the most popular ones were Dino 101 and Mountains 101, but they're always coming up with really neat ones. Astro 101 is relatively new. There's new biological sciences one, and they just came out with science literacy, which I think is really interesting and you can check out because all of these courses are available to students before you come to the University of Alberta because they're on a platform called Coursera, which is free online courses. And yeah, science literacy, just helping you understand like, what to believe in the media and making sure that the articles you're reading are legitimate. So probably a really good course to take, um, especially in today's environment. Study abroad. So obviously this has been put on pause, uh, but when it's safe to do so, again, there are so many cool study abroad opportunities. I myself did a study abroad semester in a different country and I got the credits towards my degree. So you can take a course somewhere else in the world. We have partnerships with over 50 different countries and places and get credit towards your degree, but spend a semester somewhere else. Like I've had friends of mine study in Italy, you know, taking courses, arts electives in like food and culture and, you know, eating Italian food. And that was part of the course. Um, but if you're looking for more science specific opportunities, we off also offer those as well. So we have one on uh, called the Banfield Marine Sciences Center, which is a partnership with an institution on Vancouver Island. And it's an Oceanside campus, which offers three or six week field courses for students who are especially interested in marine science. You can actually be out on the water, you know, um, just like really experiencing a different environment than you could if you were living in Edmonton, obviously. And then we have the Southern African Field School, which was specifically offered to the Department of Biological Sciences, where you could actually earn 15 credits in a spring and summer term, which is actually quite a few credits to add to your degree. And you would spend your time in three places, Swaziland, South Africa, and Mozambique, which is a really good option for students who are interested in ecology and zoonotic diseases, or especially for anyone in having a biological sciences minor. When it comes to the faculty of... AILS, they have also a lot of really cool opportunities. So you can take programs in France related to culinary arts. You could research animal breeding in the Netherlands. You could study forests in Wales, participate in our Mexico agro food and business course, or even study fashion in France. They also have a partnership with um, a university in the Yukon. So you could check out Whitehorse and also study. And you know, and this is available to students in forestry, the environmental and conservational sciences programs. So lots of really cool opportunities to do science outside of Edmonton. All right, so I wanted to highlight this website. It was created because we get asked a lot, what can you do with your degree? I heard you can't get a job if you study science and that, that, nothing could be further from the truth. 
you have a lot of opportunities when it comes to having a career in science. And at the University of Alberta, our graduates actually have one of the highest employment rates in the country. So you will find work after you graduate. For example, if you were to go to this website and say, you know, I'm interested in chemistry, what could I do with chemistry? There's a lot you might not be aware of. With a chemistry degree, you could work for a company cleaning water. You could work for a soap or shampoo or cosmetic company actually making the products that are sold. You could work for clothing and textile companies because you're testing the fabric. So we've had postings with Lululemon. Really neat things. Um, so this website gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do just based on the skills that you'll achieve in the degree and then the connections that we have with employers. And it'll also kind of indicate where our students have gone to do internship placements. So we indicate that on this as well. All right, so kind of reached the end point of talking about our different degree programs. So now we're going to transition into admission requirements. So if you're in grade 12, that is the year that you'll be able to apply to the Faculty of Science or the Faculty of Ales at the U of A. And depending on the faculty you're interested in, the high school courses are going to differ. So applications opened October 1st and will remain open until March 1st. So that's your time window to submit your application. We always recommend applying earlier than later. I think it's always beneficial to just get it out of the way. And I'll explain why as well. But first, you need to know that you have the courses to be eligible for the program. So if you're looking at the Faculty of Science, we always require five high school subjects and it's always English 30-1 and Math 30-1. Then we need to see two science courses at the 30 level. So Biology 30, Chemistry 30, Math 31, Physics 30, or even Computing Science Advanced, as long as it's a CTS course and is five credits. And then the fifth subject can be one of a hundred. So it can be a fine arts course like art or, or music. It can be a humanities course like social 30-1 or Aboriginal studies, any language course at the 30 level, or here we can use another math or science if you've taken it, or even science 30. For ALS, it's not necessarily um, as streamlined as ours are because their they're different programs may require different subjects. However, they're always going to require English, should move to the next slide, English 30-1 and Math 30-1, and then the remaining three courses will vary. So just be aware of that. I've used the Environmental and Conservation Sciences as an example. So in this program, you specifically need the Bio 30 and the Chemistry 30, and that makes sense because you're studying the environment. So you need to have the, those two courses. So just be aware. Um, admission to science is competitive. Uh, admission to ALS is also competitive, um, but it will be a little bit less competitive than science. And so they're pretty open to sharing their admission average, which is typically the high 70s to the low 80s. And if we're talking about science competitive admission, because I know that question will come up, we are telling students to strive for as high as possible. So you wanna think much higher than honors with distinction. So we, we change our average every year and so it makes it tough to kind of give you an exact number. So that's kind of our best advice is to strive as high as possible and higher than honors with distinction to be competitive for our faculty. So how does it work to do your application? So you'll go online and uab.ca slash apply is the website you'll go to. You'll wanna be sure to give us everything. So you give us all of your final grade 11 marks, going to take, give us any final grade 12 marks that you may have and also a list of courses that you're planning to take in grade 12. One application means we will look at you multiple times. So that's why it's good to apply early. You can apply now and if you're not accepted, it's not the end of the road. It just means that you're not competitive right now. So if that's the case for you, you'll just have to submit updates along the way. So starting in December, you'll be able to submit new final marks as you get them. Excuse me. Okay, so if, if you've applied and you've been admitted, congratulations, but if not, keep at it. Make sure you set reminders to update your new final marks. All right, sorry about that. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. So I wanna go back to 
the Q&A on Slido to see if we have any student questions. Awesome, 17, wow, there's so many, awesome. That's great, I love to see that. And I'll, uh, let's take a look. <coughs> okay, were there any that came in the chat? Uh, yes, Alsana, there's one um, in the chat, um, and then I'll, I don't know if you want to start because I believe it's from a teacher, and then we can kind of go through the uh, Slido questions. Sounds great. Thank you. Sorry, I just have a dry throat. Okay. No worries. So, a uh, question came in from a teacher. So, in terms of applying earlier, is it advantageous to take courses you're, you're using to apply earlier in your grade 12 school year? So just to clarify how admissions work, we can only calculate your competitive average on final marks. So depending on what you provide us with in the application, you don't need to give us just five subjects. That's not recommended. Just give us everything. And then as faculties, we pick and choose the courses we need for admission to give you the best possible average. So for example, we prefer grade 12 marks, but if you don't have them completed, then that's when we use grade 11. So some students at this point in the year only have grade 11 and that's fine. We will calculate your average on all of your final grade 11 marks. And you could be offered admission. Some students actually have the combination as we call it. So they may have majority grade 11 marks, but maybe one completed grade 12 marks. We'll use that grade 12 mark, but we can only use final marks. So we can't use um, any kind of, we can't use midterm marks or like mid-year marks unless you're taking IB or AP and it's a full year course. So I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I've answered that question um, exactly, but if I haven't, just maybe write in the chat again. Okay, so to the questions, what are the differences in the honors programs compared to the non-honors programs? All right, and maybe Chanel, if you want to uh, comb through the questions, maybe see if there's any kind of um, groupings of questions, but I can see that this is a really important one because there's 14 likes. Okay, so an honors program or a non-honors program, all of them will require you to complete the same amount of degree credits. So in order to graduate from science, you need to complete 120 degrees, regardless of the program that you're in. Honors just means that you're focusing more on a specific subject area. So here's an example that I like to give. So maybe you're interested in neuroscience. So this is available as an honors program. So in an honors neuroscience program, you're going to have to maintain a GPA of 3.3. You're going to have a very structured course curriculum, so you won't have as many rooms to take electives and options. And majority of your courses are going to be structured in a way that you're graduating with a degree in honors neuroscience. So you focus your four years on this particular subject area and nothing else. Okay, that's what you focused on. Plus, in an honors program, you're going to have that structured research capstone course in your fourth year. So all of that is kind of bundled into an honors program. On the flip side, maybe you are still interested in studying neuroscience, but you don't really want to dedicate your entire degree to just neuroscience. Maybe you like neuroscience areas, but also maybe want to study, I don't know, statistics, or you want to take arts or like sociology courses. If that's the case, that's when a general science program could be a better fit. Within a general science program, you can pick a biological sciences major, and within the biological sciences major, there are 16 courses that fall into that major. And those courses include pharmacology, physiology, neuroscience, zoology, entomology, botany, biology, cell biology, all of these courses that you can kind of pick and choose lots of them and maybe take some of those neuroscience courses, but take something else because your interest is kind of divided between lots of different subject areas. Or maybe you're in a general science program and you decide, you know what, I love taking neuroscience courses. So I'll take a lot of neuroscience courses as part of my bio major. But at the end of the day, you're still graduating with a general program with a, with a major in biology. You don't have the designation of neuroscience on your actual parchment. You can still add research to a general science program or a specialization just by you know, getting involved in research in another way. It's just not part of your degree. I hope that answers that question. Um, there's no disadvantage to being in a non-honors program. It's just really personal preference. Um, I should also add, you can always change your mind. So if you started in general science and discover you have a passion in something in an honors degree, you can transfer or vice versa. Um, the next question I think you should look into, uh, actually is the next one about um, sign up for classes. So those next steps after you've been offered admission and how, and I think this applies to all of our degrees. Yeah, this is a good one. 
Yes, so if you've been admitted, congratulations. Um, there's not much you can do right now besides just accepting your offer, and then we'll start to communicate with you. But definitely next steps would be course registration, which typically starts in March. So we'll start communicating with you about registration 101 workshops. So we'll give you advice on how to structure your first year, depending on which faculty you're in and which program you're in. So that's going to come a little bit later. So for those that haven't been offered admission yet, Make sure that you update your marks starting in December if you're in the quarterly system and you'll be able to, you may even get that offer of admission prior to registration 101. And if you don't, uh, don't panic. Uh, lots of our students are still admitted, you know, April, May, June, July, and they're still able to register in classes. So that's coming a bit, little bit later, but nothing you need to worry about just yet. All right. Um, do you actually go over the admission process, like our rolling admission? Because I think that'll address some of the questions I'm seeing overall. Yes. Um, so just um, about being uh, evaluated more than once. Yeah, because some sense of concern if their marks are bad in grade 11, but they have good marks in grade 12, or if they don't have admission right now, what happens? So yes. like U of A as a whole is on a rolling admission basis. So maybe if you can explain that. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. Definitely a lot of students are always wondering about that. So rolling admission means that you submit one application, but we're also assessing you um, continually throughout the year, as long as you're giving us more marks. So yes, if your grade 11 marks were not good, I would still recommend applying because nothing, nothing bad can come from that. It just means that you're not going to be competitive right now. If your grade 12 marks are going to be better, that's great. Then as you get those new final grade 12 marks, you will input them into the application so that we can recalculate your average. It's also important on your application to know that you have two choices for admission. So you have your first choice and you have your second choice. It's really good to be strategic about your choices. So first choice, put whatever faculty or program you really wanna get into. But for your second choice, you wanna pick a program that uses a different set of its subjects for admission and has a different competitive average. So in the event that you're not eligible for your first choice, you may get into your second choice. So for example, a lot of students put science as their first choice. It's a, you know, they know it's competitive. And then their second choice might be the faculty of AILS or even arts. You may even see that you have an offer to your second choice before you get an offer to your first choice. And that's because we process you for your second choice if you're not competitive for the first. So in that case, you can apply. You may not have an offer to science, but you may have an offer to your second choice. You can accept that offer and know that you're coming to university next year, but at the same time, you're also going to be still evaluated for your first choice, as long as you give us new marks. And we will evaluate you for that first choice all the way until the end of your grade 12 year. So regardless of when you apply, the application cycle, it's, it's a rolling process where we're always evaluating you as long as we have um, new marks to calculate an average. So apply early. It's okay if your grade 11 marks are bad and your grade 12 marks will be better. I hope um, that answers it. Want to add anything, Shanoa? No, I think it's great. Um, just so students can understand, um, because you're studying in Alberta and on the quarterly system, we actually are giving you lots of opportunities to update your application. So as Oksana mentioned, December 1st, you can actually submit new grades and we'll reassess you. So whenever you have a new set of final grades, update the application, we'll reassess and see if you're admissible. Um, Oksana, before you go on to the, um, I saw a great question about scholarships. I'm really, really happy to see that someone actually asked about mental health support and just some of the stuff happening on campus. I don't know if you want to talk about some of the supports to students. Yeah, so obviously this year has been really different and we recognize that, you know, not being on campus and being able to connect and be in labs and be in classes with students and, um, you know, be part of those student groups, but everything's happening virtually. So you know, services that we would normally offer. So one-on-one -on -one advising with our advisors, you can book that online. If you're struggling with your stats or math or physics or chemistry, um, you can still get help online. If you need to talk to our counseling and clinical services and need to reach psychologists, you can book that online and have that free service to students. Um, our, our faculty has a program called Science Mentors, and so these are upper year students that volunteer to be paired with first year incoming students. So this year we completely revamped that, and every single mentor has a group of 10 students that they meet with every month online to just touch base so that students can meet each other and kind of have a cohort as they move through. Their, their first year. So we've been taking a lot of different steps and the entire university has been taking a lot of different steps to help students because obviously it's just such 
a different type of year and we recognize that and we're still doing our best to shift and change and adapt so that our students have everything that they need to still be successful. So hopefully things will be back to normal. <laughs> our fingers are crossed. Um, we just don't know. We're just taking it day by day. Um, I don't know if I missed anything, Shanella, about the mental no, I think health. That I think that was great. Um, and we actually have a psychologist in-house in the faculty of science. Her name is Maddie. And so her office is actually in um, in science. Obviously, she's helping students um, virtually, uh, remotely for now. Um, but yeah, we're, it's, it's very important to us. Um, I saw that um, our teacher, um, Navid, actually mm -hmm. has a follow-up question. I don't know if you want to address that. Um, yeah, I think I understand the question now. Um, Okay, so the question was, if you have a final grade 11 mark and a final grade 12 mark, so for example, a math 20-1 mark and a math 30-1 mark, and you put them into the application, uh, which one is going to be used? So to clarify, if you have a final grade 12 mark, that is always preferred to a grade 11 mark. We only want to use a grade 11 mark if the grade 12 mark is not available. So if you have a 30-1 mark, it will be used over a 20-1 mark. Regardless of what, I understand if the grade 11 mark is better than the grade 12, but the grade 12 is what we actually prefer to use for admission. So grade 12 will always be used. I think we've clarified that. And okay, just to follow up on that, sorry, yeah, Alpana, I'm okay. sorry, no, just to follow up on that, I see a question earlier, but also about retaking a course. So some students um, are going to have a course in progress on the application or they're repeating a class. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about how we take the, which marks we will accept? Yeah, for sure. So say you took a math 30-1 mark and you know it's going to be used for admission and it's not really good and you want to take it again uh, to get a better mark. That's totally okay. You'll just want to indicate on your application that, you know, if you did math 30-1, this was your final mark, but you're also planning to retake it and have a new mark and that way we'll know to expect a different mark. So at the end, if you have you know, two marks in math 30-1, we will of course use whichever one is higher. So you'll just want to make sure that if you are retaking any courses that you're doing it from September until June, you cannot count on summer um, school marks to come in on time for us to use them just because we need your transcripts by August 1st. So just keep that in mind if you are retaking a course, have it done by like the regular school year and don't count on summer school if you're in grade 12. If you're in grade 11, it's a different story, then of course you can do summer school courses because you're not yet applying. So I hope that clarifies. Okay, MCAT. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about this because um, you can explore this once you actually get to the University of Alberta. Um, there's lots of ways to study for the MCAT and you can definitely talk to medicine and dentistry about that. Scholarships. So this is a really good one. So just by applying to the University of Alberta and submitting your application, you're automatically considered for our um, scholarships. So that includes if you're doing AP, IB, um, the top 5% in each faculty are awarded money automatically. But if you want to receive more awards beyond these um, automatic scholarships, then you have to submit a separate application before December 15th. So another good reason to apply early. If you apply early, you'll be able to actually apply for the other um, kind of application-based scholarships, which are more than the leadership-based scholarships. So definitely look into that. If I've been accepted into a program, can I switch to another? So on your application, if you've been admitted, say, to a general science program and you actually feel like you wanted to be in an honors or specialization, you are allowed to change your application one time. So if you wanna change your application and change your first choice, you can do so by clicking the program change request form in Launchpad. And you'll have to do that by February, I think it's 16th, in order to make the change in time for this cycle. Um, otherwise, if you don't make that change prior to that date, you're in the program that you've been admitted to for your first year. And then you can absolutely transfer programs later on, which a lot of students find that they, they, they do in like year two or year three. So again, you're never stuck where you start, but if you specifically wanna change your first choice right now, you can do so one time on your application. Um, if you're in a general science program and you just wanna change your major, that's a very different Thing. You don't need to change your choice on your application. Once you're actually a student in, in science here in September, you'll just simply change your major by filling out a form. 
Okay, we did the mental health. I think we're getting close to time. So let's see here. Um, how does um, I, oh, go ahead, Chanel. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, yeah, let's talk about the IB question. Perfect. How does IB affect acceptance rates? Okay, so regardless if you're doing IB or not, the admission averages that we set are the admission averages. So if you're doing IB, obviously you're going to have your IB mark and then your Alberta curricular mark, and we'll just use whichever one has a higher, higher mark to calculate your average. So if you're not in IB, like the admission average isn't changing for anybody. There are benefits to doing IB though. So obviously you're kind of accelerating in your curriculum and you could earn transfer credit. So if you score a six or higher, you can be eligible for transfer credit. So I've seen students who, you know, can get like four or five courses of credit in their first year, which kind of opens up the doors for them to explore and take other courses that are not kind of in those standard foundational courses you would normally take. On top of that, there are other events and opportunities for IB students plus awards. So the benefits of IB are kind of on the others. It's not for, we don't give preference for IB students for admission because admission is the same across the board, but there's other benefits for you in terms of transfer credits, scholarships, and other events. Okay, um, is it optional to take a year off and apply? Sure, like that is definitely possible. So lots of students, for whatever reason, feel like they're not ready for university right after high school and that's okay. Um, it just means that you're not applying right now. So you would apply next October. So the admission cycle is always the same, October 1st to March 1st. So if you decide to take a year off, just make sure that next, between next October and March, you're submitting an application to go in for that next September. So that's all that that would mean. Um, I'm assuming in the year off that you're not going to be taking any post-secondary courses or anything like that. Um, just keep in mind that if you do go to another university and start actually taking courses and then want to transfer over to the U of A, then you're, you'd be considered a, you can be considered a transfer applicant where we're going to be assessing you for admission on not only your high school average, but also on your post-secondary grades. And so, so to transfer from one university to another is again, just as simple as filling out the application and just indicating that you're currently a post-secondary student. And then we'll just get the transcripts that we need. So just instead of a high school transcript, we'll have a high school transcript and wherever you are. Can I just interrupt, Oksana? So I yeah, have uh, a question about applying and getting admission and deferring your start date. Um, so do you want me to, do you want to take that or? No, you take that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so normally we allow students to skip one semester. So students can apply, um, get admission and start in January, start their courses in January. So they've been admitted for the fall, but they can skip one term and still remain active. This year, because of the pandemic for the first time ever, uh, we allowed some students to defer to the following fall. It's something that has never been done before. And I, and I don't know if it will happen again. It's just because of the pandemic. Um, and then I did see another question where students were asking if we would be admitting more students because of COVID-19. Um, and it's surprising. Um, Despite the pandemic, we did not see a drop in our numbers uh, for this year. We still had a lot of students apply, admit, and start their degree in science. So um, we have a lot of students studying online. So it hasn't changed. We were going to be admitting more students because of the pandemic. We're just going to continue as normal. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think that's good information to add for sure. Um, Okay, one other question here. What if you're retaking a course? Are you going to take the first mark or the second? I think we addressed this. We're going to pick the one with the, the best mark if you retook a course twice, if both marks are available. Um, can you major in business? No, not in the Faculty of Science or the Faculty of Ales. You would have to actually look into the School of Business and transfer into that faculty. So you'll want to look into that. Um, if I have a high average but apply late, when the class is full, will I be accepted? So again, it's always best to just apply early and get your application in. We just never know what's going to happen in the future. And because admission is competitive, we just never know where we're gonna be at in the future. So again, it's still better to apply early and get that application in because you can always update your marks and at least you've, you've already been assessed and you have your application in queue. Um, when do I apply for a research certificate? Does it happen at a specific point in my degree? Yeah, usually, this is a good question. If you're interested to do a research certificate, step one would be to make an appointment with an academic advisor. And then their list of courses that you just have to start taking 
so that you can graduate with the research certificate. So then it's just a matter of plopping in those courses towards that research certificate during your year. So uh, in order to get that done, you probably want to think about doing it in year two so that you can get all the courses in. And sometimes that means extend, like maybe if you add it later, you might extend your degree by a semester or two, which is, it happens and it's totally fine. Not everybody finishes their degree in four years. Um, I think we've talked about pre-admission quite a bit. Um, we talked about that. There's some questions about financial assistance. Like what if you don't feel you're financially strong to go to the university? Um, and I know we spoke about scholarships, but um, I don't think a lot of students realize we also have bursaries. There's different forms of emergency funding. Um, you definitely want to look at student loans through either the provincial or federal government in terms of funding options. So. Um, just know that there's many options for you if you feel that you might not be financially strong to start whatever post-secondary you want to attend. Um, so if you're looking at the U of A, we have the um, fin Student Financial Support Office, and they've got so many different resources they can help you out with. So just email us and we can point you in that direction. Yeah, for sure. Another teacher said, can you apply and get admission and then defer your start? So as Chanel mentioned, you can apply and be admitted for the fall, and you can take a at most a semester off. This year was just an exception where we actually allowed a deferral for an entire year. But as she said, we're not sure if this will be the case for, for next year. Uh, can we use our fourth quarter marks to apply? So the application closes March 1st. I'm not sure when your fourth quarter actually starts and ends, but just make sure that you apply before March 1st. Yeah, and your final grades are due August 1st. So we'll wait for those final transcripts. So we wait to the bitter end to see if we can get you in. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. No, thanks, Janela. Don't worry about cutting me off. Um, how many semesters, how many classes in a semester would you take in a full-time general science program? So full-time in any program is five courses in a term. So our terms run September to December and then January until April. So you take five courses in the fall and five in the winter. We also have spring and summer terms, but you can only take two courses in spring and summer if you wish at most, or you don't have to do spring and summer, it's up to you. But full time is five courses. Medicine, you can have any degree. They will tell you any degree. They're looking for a variety of students, arts, business, engineering, education, science, whatever. Pick the program that you think you will enjoy the most because that will bring you the most success in terms of your grades and you'll also really enjoy your degree. Uh, Nate does not offer four-year undergraduate programs. Um, they only offer two-year diplomas. So that's a big difference from Nate to the U of A. Um, and Nate is more of a polytechnic institute. So you'd want to talk to them about their programs and then talk to us about the ones you're interested for the U of A. Chanel, are you going to add something? Um, I just saw another question, but I mean, in terms of the need, I think that also ties in with the transfer from another institution. And if you're looking at attending another school in Alberta, I'd say check out the Alberta Transfer Guide. It's created by the Alberta government and um, it contains all the agreements between the institutions in the province. And so you can actually look and see, okay, if I go to Nate, do any of their courses transfer to the U of A? Do any of their, their diplomas transfer to the U of A? Or any school, any school in our province? So if you are thinking of transferring, I suggest you take a look at that just so you can kind of plan ahead. Because I mean, the reality is some people do want to transfer or change programs. Um, so that'll help you if you're looking at doing that within the province. Yep. I had it up on my screen for a second. That's it's a good resource. Okay. Um, we have co ops for every program. Um, I see somebody's asking, and this is kind of interesting about, so if you're in science and they're asking about taking like Chinese courses and other courses, I don't know if you want to talk about that. Um, Oh dear, I just lost the question. It was... Um... Yeah, you can absolutely take language courses as long as um, you have the room in your degree to take electives because even if you're doing a science degree, we still want you to take more than just science courses. So you're actually required to do arts courses in a science degree. There's a minimum number. And then obviously you have a minor. So with all of that, you have room to really kind of pick and choose the courses that you think would be fun or interesting, or even if you want that to be your minor. So yes, you could do computing science and take some language courses for sure. I think we only have about four minutes left. So uh, there's a teacher asking a question, Wendy. Mm -hmm. If a student gets early admission with their 20 level science, but has a lower mark in 30, how will this affect their application? What is the minimum grade they need to keep their 
offer? Yeah, that's a good question, Wendy. So, um, yes, if you are offered admission, your offer letter states the condition to retain that offer. It'll state that you must um, pass all of the classes that are used for admission and that your average um, should not drop significantly. So whatever average you had when you were admitted, there just shouldn't be a significant drop. Um, the institutional average is normally 70%, but again, if a student was admitted at a 90, um, that doesn't permit them to drop their average to a 70%. It, they should still try to maintain a good average, similar to the one that they had that they were offered admission. There just can't be a significant drop. So all those details are actually outlined in the student's offer letter. Yeah, it'll actually say to maintain your offer, you must maintain X percent average. Um, and then it says that, yeah, it can drop significantly. So if we see that your average has dropped 15% or 20%, it will be flagged because then we wonder, there's going to be some questions um, about suitability and things like that. So you definitely want to try and maintain what is stated in your offer letter. And it does vary because the minimum for the honors program is different from the minimum from the general. So we, it's, it differs for all the degrees on campus. Okay, uh, I see a question about double majors. So maybe I'll just touch on that really quickly. Um, a double major just means that you are equally interested in both. So maybe you love chemistry and maybe you love psychology and you actually want to take an equal amount of courses in both. You don't want one to be um, kind of more, kind of, uh, you don't want one area to be uh, where you spend most of your time over the other, you want them to be equal. That's all that a double major means. So you're just gonna be taking the same amount of courses in that. Normally, if you, if you have a major, you have to take 12 courses in that subject area. If you have a minor, you only have to take eight courses. So having a double major just means you're taking 12 courses in both of those majors. So it'll restrict your electives a little bit, but not by much. Okay, so I really think that that's great that we had so many questions and we did our best to get through all of them. So we appreciate um, that all of you submitted about 50, I think it was more than 50 questions. And it's really nice to see um, all of you interacting with us. There's a question about, you know, will it still be online next year? We have no idea where we will be <laughs> in September. And it is frustrating. I think it's frustrating for everyone who's working and going to school. Like we all wanted to go back to normal, but obviously we can't do so if it's not safe. So we hope that things will be back to normal, but we just don't know. And our best guess is it'll probably be a hybrid. Um, we put so much time and energy into transitioning online and we were never an online institution. So um, I think in the future, there may be a little bit more flexibility for sure that we never used to have, but we just don't know. But thank you so much for the time today. And hopefully this gave you some more information. If you do want to contact us, our email is science.recruiting at ualberta.ca. And we're always happy to help. Thank you again. Okay, I just wanted to uh, just come in and say thanks so much for, for being here with us today, Oksana and Shanella. I think that um, you guys provided so much good information, not just on the sciences and the Yales programs, but also, um, also on general admissions and everything uh, that has to do with the U of A. So um, thank you to teachers for taking the time out of your classes to be able to sit in on this. And thank you for all the great questions from our students. Once again, thanks, Oksana and Shanella, and uh, let's give them a round of applause. I'm not sure if they can hear it or not. But thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having thank us. You. It was fun. Okay, have a great day, everyone. You too. Bye.